as you guys know, if you've been around Tailored Expressions, we offer a free item with every $100 purchase. And for June, we actually ran out early of the item that we were giving away, which was that frame and frame three die. So you may already have that, but I wanted to make a special announcement that we have launched our July freebie a little early just for the release of this kit. So I wanted to show you what that is. Here is the July freebie. It is called One in a Melon, and it is a three layer stencil with a small clear stamp to go with it. So the clear stamp has a couple of sentiments, a couple of small words, sweet and yum, and then also the seeds that can be added to the watermelon with the clear stamp or with the stencil, the third stencil layer. So this is our 100 plus freebie that will continue through July or of course while supplies last. And I wanted to show you just a couple of samples that were created. So when I was testing out the concept, this is the piece that I created and I haven't turned it into a card yet, but I thought it was cute. And so I wanted to show it. I used a couple of different colors of green and then I mixed those words kind of in the background there. So you could add even just a black hello sentiment across it and make a really fun uh, summer card. So let's show you a couple more here from Miss Jill Hawkins. You can see she always does amazing things with googly eyes. I think this guy up here is my favorite. See how the seed ends up looking like a little surprised mouth. I think that's hilarious how she worked that out. I'm not sure if it was a happy accident or if she actually intended that. Um, this stencil is called Make a Dash, and so that's a great one to pair with watermelons. Kind of looks like watermelon seeds. We also have one called Wonky Dots that would be a great watermelon seed background as well. Y'all Gonna Make Me Lose My Rind is a funny little sentiment that's included. Rind instead of mind. I hope everybody gets that kind of punny, um, punny sentiment there. And then we have Thanks a Melon on this card that she did. So... Also, unbeknownst to me, Jill decided to be super creative and think outside the box, and she made these watermelons into pizza slices. You guys, how adorable is this? Jill is so creative. It looks like she did not use the third layer of the stencil, which is the seed layer, and instead she used Copic markers to add things like green peppers and olives and some pepperonis to her pizza. And then, of course, the crust is toffee colored, and then this looks to be a little bit of a mix of blend with ink and Copic. But I loved the sentiments that she chose for that too. Hey girl, hey, got stretchy pants? The struggle is real. That is so true. Who doesn't love some pizza? Anytime pizza is an option, I vote yes. Okay, so there we have it, the 100 plus freebie for this month. Now let's talk about, just my camera here just a second, let's talk about the Bees Knees kit. So I think the first thing you guys need to know about this is if you're considering purchasing it, do not wait. Um, this one has been very well responded to so far this morning. Lots of people excited about the Bees, and um, so I am expecting this one to sell out. So if you're listening now, go find the kit and grab it if you know that you love it. Okay, let's talk about this. This is the Bees Knees Stamp and Stencil Combo, and that's what the whole concept is built around. So you have the background stamp that will stamp the stripes, the little stinger, and the antenna for the bees. It does not stamp the eyes. Now the reason for that we made the eyes into a stencil layer is because often when you stamp black ink, and then try to blend over the top of it with a light color like yellow, you're gonna get some smearing. And so we included that as a stencil layer so that you can do the yellow first and then put the stencil eyes over the top. Of course, you could choose not to use the stencil for the eyes and you could do like Louise did on the make and take for today. And you could use our black drip drops for the eyes as well. So that's an option too. All right, then if I pull this out, I guess you guys can see a little bit better exactly what's included here. So the background stamp, as I said, stamps all of the black parts that you see on the front panel, except for the eyes. So it's gonna stamp the stripes, the stinger, and the antenna. 
And then you're going to have this stencil that comes next. So this will fill in all of the yellow parts of the bees. Then you come in with the next one. This one is the wings. Um, I've seen lots of different options for this. I'm gonna be using glitter paste a little bit later on with sea salt ink. And you can see on this stencil, it has those etched alignment guides here so that you can line up the antenna on the bees with the uh, stamped bees. So you can make sure your wings are perfectly in place. I should also mention that if you're looking for the etched item numbers on these stencils, they are along the left side. So typically we do them at the bottom. However, with this design, there wasn't room at the bottom of every stencil layer to put that. So this time they're along the left side. So as you're aligning, just make sure you know that the item number and company name are on the left side of those stencils. So you're not trying to line up the bees with sideways wings. That's not easy. <laughs> And then the third layer, as I mentioned, we did the eyes as a separate stencil so that you can do them last and not risk having any smearing of your ink when you're doing the yellow, um, when you're doing the yellow part of the bees. So those are the three stencil layers and the stamp that come with that stamp and stencil combo. Of course, I didn't mention this, but it all comes in this cute pouch. And I love the sticker, Heather designed this sticker. It says the bee's knees, the name of the kit, and features lots of the artwork from the kit itself. I think it's fun how it kind of cuts around the hexagon shape. I love that sticker. All right, good morning, Shelly. Good to see you. Hi, Kyra. And Claire loves the pizza slices. <laughs> oh, all right. So here are the remaining parts of the kit. So those bees that you stamped and stenciled can be cut out with the coordinating bees knees dies. There's one for the large and one for the small bee. Now if you wanted to use a clear stamp to create the bee, we have the same pieces available here. I would probably recommend die cutting your bees first and then stamping the pieces onto them. You'll get a, bit, a little bit better uh, lineup, I think, than trying to place them just perfectly, especially with those wings, since you don't know exactly where they're meant to go unless you have the die cut already done. So you can use those clear pieces to do that, or if you don't plan to die cut it, you could just stamp it directly onto your paper, and then it doesn't quite matter as much the alignment of those pieces. You've got some cute sentiments, a little buzzing bee trail, flowers in four different sizes, I like the what's the buzz sentiment. That's a good one just to send to a friend when you haven't a reason, but just wanna know what's up with them. So that is the what's the buzz clear stamp set. And then we have this honeycomb cluster. I think that one is super fun. There's a couple of samples here that use that really nicely. We have this one. I think Jill made this one. Yes, Jill Hawkins made this card and she cut apart her honeycomb cluster. Of course, she stitched it to the background and adhered it in the corners. So I love how that looks. That is, you can see how that die functions. It would be fun too, I wanna see, I think Louise did that on her card. I was gonna see if there were any other ones. So here, she cut it out of two different colors and pieced back in some of the yellow pieces, the yellow hexagons within that. So I think that doesn't have to be just honeycomb. You could do a really cool background with different colors. Of course, I'm envisioning rainbow, um, but I think that's a super fun element to incorporate with bee cards or without bees. All right, so let's look at a few more samples here before we talk about the last things. Let's look at Heather's samples. I think it's fun to see when the illustrator of the kit actually uses the contents because usually when you're drawing or doing illustration, you can envision a layout for your project. And so it's fun to actually see those come to paper. Of course, Heather used her favorite color, which is honey, honey cardstock on these. And I assume that's honey ink as well. She used the glitter paste, like I talked about, our iridescent happy medium glitter gel on the wings just to give it a little bit of extra sparkle. Of course, the white splatters to add some pop to the project. 
I love the honeycombs here, how she filled in this one, and this one is left open and adhered over the same color cardstock for a tone on tone effect. So there's Heather's cards, super cute. Then, I know, Perry says rainbow, no way. I know, I'm so predictable, right? Let's show you, speaking of rainbow, this fun card from Jill. So she actually did do colored bees on this one. Her um, stripes are stamped in gray ink, which I think is a little more subtle with the pastel colors that she decided to use for the wings and the bodies. I think that turned out really cute. I love along the left side here, if you can see that, if the camera's catching those score lines, how she just adds those little touches of extra detail to make a clean and simple card really pop. All right, let's talk about these two also from Jill. Uh-oh, I dropped one. Hold on. All right, I had to climb underneath the POS system here to get the card that I dropped. All right, so these are also from Jill. The purple clouds, I believe that's our new macaron ink color, which looks really pretty with the bees. She kind of allowed for a view into the backdrop while also using the rest of the sides of the bee background. So I think that's really clever because a lot of times these bees over on the side, they're cut off just enough that you can't die cut them and use them separately, but here she gave you a way that you could use those bees on the side for your card panel. I think that's super cute. <laughs> Good morning, Farley, 100 degrees in Sacramento. Woo, you were up early to get your kit. Glad to hear you got one. All right, again, Jill stamped those in the gray ink for the stripes on the bees, so you can play with that color a little bit. It doesn't always have to be the, the stark black. The You Are Amazing sentiment comes from our new Boho Hellos stamp set with the coordinating dies. And again, she's incorporating all kinds of little touches into these cards with the stitching here, the stitching on the little honeycomb cluster. She uses a lot of dies to add dimension, to pop up inside frames, etc. All right, I bet you guys are excited to see Kavya's cards. Kavya always comes up with something really unexpected, and I love how she incorporated bees with flowers. So this is our Bursting Blooms stamp and die that she used here in the center, and then surrounded, because we all know bees are drawn to flowers, so she surrounded that floral cluster with the stenciled bees. And then over here we have the honeycomb coming in from the edges along with our how does your garden grow. So those were from our wedding release earlier this year. I think it was beginning of May and or maybe it was beginning of June. You guys this everything like I said goes by so fast. I think it was the beginning of June that we did our wedding release. So those are fairly new, those little flowers and leaves that you can see in the background here. And then the bees buzzing among the flowers and the honeycomb, I think is so pretty. Gina says, wow. I know that's always what I say when I see Kavya's cards. Like how did she come up with that? And then to take that vision in, in your head and actually make it translate to paper is pretty, um, pretty amazing. So very pretty. Of course, she's got her little um, line, lines and dots here with the white gel pen to add even more dimension. You can see she's added a lot of that to the flower coloring as well. All right, so that's Kavya. Now, before we talk about these last cards from Emily, let's talk about the last item in the kit. So this is the envelopes and envelope seals. So as you guys know by now, we love to encourage you to send the cards that you make. And so that's why we include these items in all of our kits, coordinating envelopes with envelope seals. And we have six envelopes, two white, two black, and two honey, and then six envelope seals. So you get three each of these two designs. There's what's the buzz, and just because. So those are fun. They work for lots of different occasions. You could even put uh, what's the buzz on a birthday card if you wanted to. 
We also have extra packs of envelope seals. So you get six in the kit, but if you want additional envelope seals, we have those available currently. I'm not sure when you're watching this, if they will still be available because I know those have been popular in part because um, Emily always creates such a unique card using one of the envelope seals as a focal image. So you can see what she did here. She discovered that that envelope seal fits perfectly with our triple slim circle. So here is the trifold, I'm sorry, I said triple slim. I meant trifold mini slim circle template that we offer. It has the die that cuts the large circle in the front then the small circle in the second layer, and then you open up to the base layer to see the full design. So I think that's super fun how each layer has its own little something on it. And that's how that card looks. So we do sell these uh, mini slim trifold card bases in both toffee and sugar cube on the Tailored Expressions web store. And then that mini slim trifold template as well. So I loved how she used that little envelope seal in a creative way. And then we have this one also very creative from Emily. She pulled out our over the rainbow die set and cut it out in blacks and yellows with our Buffalo plaid stamped on one of the layers. It's got the clouds and then the little bees kind of poking around the rainbow. So of course I love this one. It's not your traditional rainbow colors, but it has a rainbow on it. So um, Emily and I share the love of rainbows, so I always love to see what she creates, whether it's an actual rainbow colored item or incorporates a rainbow like this one does. Okay, y'all, what do you think? Now I haven't mentioned this yet. Hopefully, I'm not sure if Charlie put this link up at the very beginning at the top of this discussion, but um, since we're celebrating with our new Bees Knees kit, we have several items that are honeycomb or hexagon shaped that we have put on sale. So just for this week through Sunday, these products that you see here will be 10% off. They are in the sale category. So up at the top of your navigation bar on the Tailored Expressions website in that gray bar, it will say sale. You can click on that and find these products at 10% off. So this is the mini slim trifold template. That's the one I was talking about that Emily was using. She used the circle. However, the hexagon is the one that we've put on our sale for this week. So that is called the mini slim trifold template stitched hexagons. Then we have from a previous kit, I think it's been over a year ago, we released a kit called Happy Hex and that includes this stamp, this stencil to fill in the hexagons, and then also a set of hexagon dies. And those can obviously be used for B cards as well, so we've put those on our honeycomb hexagon sale. Then we have this stencil that's called honeycomb. That's a fun one. It's a very, it's a pretty large scale stencil. I was gonna try to find, I think Jill used that on her first project that I showed you, this one. So you can see she used that in the background. It looks like potato chip cardstock with maybe pineapple over the top. And you can see what that one looks like. So that's on the sale. Then we have our masking stencil. This is the hexagon shaped masking stencil. This one, I forgot to mention with the Happy Hex products, but this is a set of small clear stamps that can be stamped inside the hexagons from that happy hex background. So you could do this all in yellows and blacks, maybe add some white if you're stamping over toffee. Um, so those little patterns fit inside these hexagons. And they also will fit inside the hexagons from our, from our um, Create in Quads layering stencil hexagon. So that's where you get those four patterns from the four layered stencil. I'm gonna be showing you some backgrounds that I created with this once we get started in our crafty session here. So that is also 10% off. Yay! <laughs> Jamie loves the buffalo plaid rainbow. I know, so clever. All right, let me get my stuff out here. Get myself organized. 
So have you guys been crafting a lot so far this summer? Have you found yourself in your, um, in your stamp room or your dining room table or wherever it is that you do your stamping? Have you been able to enjoy that this summer? All right. Kyra, you're gonna pull out the happy hex again. I think that's a great idea. It's still um, a really unique and versatile kit, even though it's not super new. Okay, I am missing a piece of Misty grid paper. I'm just gonna keep right on going because I don't have my trusty assistant in the room, so it will probably be about 30 seconds before she hears that I'm missing something. Okay, so I'm gonna grab my piece of paper first, and I'm just gonna adhere this down to the base of my Misty, which normally it would be my grid paper. And then I can just wash it off later. Give it a good wipe down. Then we're gonna grab the bee's knees of the stamp here. You can place that over the top. I do this both ways. Sometimes I'll put the stamp down and put my paper on top of it and close the back lid. This time I'm doing the front lid. Um, doesn't make a huge difference, sort of personal preference. And then I'm going to use VersaFine Claire ink for this. I am finding when I want a really intense black or maybe not intense is the right word but consistently stamped black without having to do more than one layer i love using this versifying claire this is the nocturne color julianne you've been foiling awesome carol carol you are working ahead she's already getting cards ready for our stamp joy card swap have you guys heard that Stamp Joy registration opens one week from Thursday, everybody? Okay, I realize I just stamped these backwards. So the stingers go to the left on the B. So I'll just flip that around when we do our stenciling. Yes, so Stamp Joy registration is opening one week from Thursday. If you're looking for information on Stamp Joy, maybe you haven't attended before and you're curious what it's all about, we do have a um, landing page on our website. So you can go to the tailoredexpressions.com and I believe it is under connect with us and then it says Stamp Joy Fall 2022. So check that out when you get a chance. Okay, so this stencil I'm going to line up over the top. I'm actually gonna go ahead and just put a little bit of tape down there so that I can keep that in place as well. So I'm gonna line this up over the top of the bees that we just stamped. And the you can see the stripes on the stencil should line up over the top of the stripes on the background. So you want those to be covered up by stencil material while you're adding the next color of ink. And that is so your black ink does not smear, right? We don't want that. Okay, I gotta go grab some temporary tape to hold this down. I know there is no such thing as purple tape anymore but that's what was available in the drawer. So we're gonna use a little bit of this. Perhaps you have pixie tape or maybe you're still working off of rolls of purple tape that you've saved. All right. Now for my bee bodies, bee bodies, I'm gonna go with honey. I think it is such a perfect color for the bees and of course the name of the color is pretty perfect for the bees as well. It is a darker, more intense color than the pineapple so I, I want to swipe off on my placemat before I come to my stencil so I don't get too much 
dark color. This can get really dark. Also, you might notice that I'm using my toffee colored blender brush instead of my yellow blender brush. I like to keep my yellow blender brush uh, for colors like pineapple, potato chip, so I'm not getting that dark brownish yellow on my bright yellow blender brush. So just a tip, honey is not a color that I use super often, so um, it makes sense for me to use this brush, but I wonder what Heather does. Heather, what brush do you use for your honey? Are you using the yellow brush? All right, those bees are coming alive. There we go. Oh yes, I'm so excited. So you guys have, it looks like lots of you have been uh, looking at the Stamp Joy information page and may have noticed that we added a virtual option this year. So um, the virtual option is not the entire event available virtually. It is simply one class that will be available virtually after the event. So I'll be teaching that on a Facebook Live, kind of like we're doing right now. Um, and then you would get the products that we'll be using in that class. So that for those of you that aren't able to travel, there is an option to enjoy Stamp Joy, or at least a piece of it, to enjoy that virtually. Those of you who come to Stamp Joy, obviously will be getting the 10 make and takes, the goodie bag, the lunches, the card swap, the dinner buffet, all of that fun stuff. Okay, I'm having a hard time doing this this way. So, I'm lining up those etched antenna with the etched or the stamped antenna. I had to lift that a little closer to my aging eyes these days. I did just get LASIK last summer, but of course I went to my eye doctor recently and she told me, you know, even though you got LASIK, your eyes are getting older and you probably going to need readers in the next four years or so. All right, so this is sea salt ink. I know we've had lots of questions about Stamp Joy on our fan page. Um, if you have questions about it, you can always feel free to email our customer support, but I know it's nice to hear from people who have been to Stamp Joy before and might have maybe a different take on it. You don't have to take our word for it. If you're wondering what kind of time you're gonna have, I know one of the biggest questions I've seen lately is, I would be coming alone and I think I would be lonely or what if I don't make friends? And I love when I see people come on and say that this is where I've made some of my best crafty friendships and we still keep in touch today and we come back to Stamp Joy every year to hang out together and enjoy a good time. So I think one of the other things that I see is uh, Stamp Joy is too far away for me to come to. And for that, I would say we have people who came from both coasts from, we're in central, Iowa, so right kind of in the middle of the U.S., and um, people came from all over. We had some from Canada last year. We had California. We had New York. We had Florida. It was really a quite a range of distances, so if you enjoy traveling, if that's not um, a deterrent for you, then I don't think any distance is too far. Okay, so I showed you this. I peeled back and showed you that I did do a little bit of stenciling on those uh, bee wings using the sea salt ink. And now I'm gonna place this back down and we're gonna do, actually, I lied. I'm gonna do the eyes before I do the, um, before I do the glitter paste on the wings because once that glitter paste is wet, it is going to be difficult or not difficult, I'm just gonna have to wait, and I don't wanna wait to do the eyes. 
All right. So again, I have those etched markings here. And we are going to do those black once I've aligned that all. And I've got the Versify Nocturne. It makes quick work of stencil blending as well, and you get that nice, um, very bold black inside those little dots. In case you missed this earlier, we're doing this step last because we want to avoid any smearing of the yellow ink. Now, I can't promise that I won't get smudgies on my fingers, but I'm trying to avoid that so I don't smudge my background. So there you can see the cute little bees are coming together. They've got wings, they've got eyes. Now we're gonna add some special, a little special touch to the wings. Where did my piece of purple tape go? Glitter, yay! Oh, and thank you. Hope says pretty nails. I did do something a little funky this time. Oh, there I have a smudge of black ink on my finger. Um, but yes, I love the fun colors, very summery. I love that my nail lady uh, is just so, she's down for whatever idea I tell her that I want, which I love. I have found the right um, nail tech for me. You never know what I'm gonna come up with. All right, so here we have our happy medium iridescent glitter paste that I am adding over the top of the wings stencil so that those wings are gonna be sparkly, just like Heather did on her card. I think maybe a couple other designers did that too. Adding just that extra little pop of sparkle is a fun way to give some dimension to the bees. And I have some that are drying already, so we can continue on with the kind of card putting together portion, even though these are gonna stay wet. I'm using the Nouveau Media spatula, which is silicone. I love this thing. Is that my stencil washer? No. Okay, I thought I heard somebody just come in. So sometimes they come in when they know I need something washed before it gets crusty. So if you're doing this at home, I wouldn't worry too much about the silicone here. It can be flaked off even if it dries on there. But I would get your stencil into water quickly after using the glitter paste because if it dries on there, it is a bugger to get it off. So there we go. So cute. Let me hold it up to the camera so you guys can see. Make sure I get under there and don't smear anything. Here's my washer. Yes. Okay. Thank you. So here we go. Look at that pretty, pretty glitter. <laughs> oh, Mari got her kit ordered. Yay for bees. Candy says, you need to have one eye be a reader and one for distance. Really? I think I would get dizzy. You have to, do you, cl I don't understand that. So do you close one of your eyes when you want to see at a distance? Or does it just, your brain just kind of functions and shuts off the other eye when you're looking out at a distance? I guess I'll figure out. I'll figure it out when I get there. For now, I don't need readers, I don't need any glasses, um, but I do just need to get a little bit closer. If you guys could uh, see the studio here, so there's about, oh, a good 18 inches, maybe two feet between my eyes and the actual desk surface because of all the cameras I've got around, so it does get kind of hard to see when I don't have it close to my eyes or closer. All right, so I did mention part of the kit are the dies that cut out these cute bees. You can see that I did these prior to the live today. I put the glitter paste on them so the wings are sparkly, and then I um, had them cut out with the, the dies after that, after that dried. 
And then I promised that I would show you this. So I had some fun with that hexagon quad stencil. I wanted to do it in bee themed colors and I was trying to channel a little bit of my inner Heather with the toffee cardstock base. So the colors that I used are the VersaFine Nocturne for the black. You could also use Oreo if you have that instead. Then I used Honey, Pineapple, and Sugar Cube for the other three colors. And just blended those across the layers of the stencil and used Copic Opaque White to add the splatters to the background. So they turned out kind of fun. And then because I used that honey color here, I added uh, my bees that are stamped in or blended in honey ink. So you could just kind of add those where you like and put a sentiment and pop them up kind of next to each other here. Sweet as can be is what I put at the bottom of that one. You'll also notice if I hold this up again, that I did use one of those flowers from the clear stamp set and I stamped it in the center of the hexagons. I thought that was a cute little addition and it happened to fit just perfectly. So I think that was this one. So the second largest fits really nicely inside of the, the hexagon opening of that stencil. Then what I wanted to show you, I know that Heather has shown this before. It's been maybe a couple of maybe a couple of years, maybe she's shown it again, but um, I always think about, I, I'm not sure who originally told me this, but you have to see something or hear something seven times before it sinks in or before you kind of grasp onto it. So what I wanted to show you today, again, because you may have seen it before on a previous live, but we have these sentiment strip duo dies. I've cut one of them here out of white cardstock and I wanted to show you an easy way let's say you have a sentiment that's a little bit shorter than the die and you don't want all this extra space on the end so I'm going to show you how you can cut that sentiment down and still have your cute flagged ends on each end and um, you can basically make whatever size uh, you want with that sentiment strip now of course the length this way it's a little bit harder, but you can do it that way as well. All right, so here we go. I have that that is cut down. I'm gonna grab my, actually, I think I'm gonna grab my acrylic block for this one. And we're gonna do, I don't know, let's do just because, because I did what's the buzz already on this one. So we're gonna set the sentiment up. I have come to love my acrylic block a little bit more than I used to because of this ink that I've been using. It is one where you can get a perfect stamp the first time, nice crisp. You don't have to close it, the lid more than once. I'll show you here if we go down up perfect stamp on the first try. So what I'm going to do is choose one end of the strip here and I'm going to position my stamp sentiment towards that end. Maybe I should go, well you guys can see that okay I think. I was going to put a colored piece underneath it but okay so we'll line that up straight. Stamp that, perfect. <laughs> Carol, now you love that hexagon quad even more, giving you more ways to use it with the bees, right? Okay, so here we have that stamped. Now I want to cut off this excess from my sentiment or from my strip. So I'm going to take a pencil actually, and I'm going to make a marking about where I want that pierce line to show up. So let me pick this up a second. You guys can see it a little closer. So about the same distance from the pierce line to my sentiment, I'm gonna mark over here. So that's about where I want my sentiment to pierce. And then the flag part, the scallop part, will come over on the right side. So when I'm putting this into my die to cut it again, I actually will be looking at the back of my piece of paper. So I'm gonna kind of peek from the top 
And I'm going to make a little mark on the back of my cardstock so that I can line that up a little bit easier. Then I'm going to take that die and I am going to position my pierce line here. Oh, I'm not in screen, sorry. I'm going to position my pierce line with that little tick mark that I made just like this. And then I'm going to make sure that it's perfectly inside both of the cut lines. I don't want to cut off any of the top or the bottom. I just want to cut this side piece. And then let me get out a little bit further so you guys can see this part better. Okay, so we have that lined up. I'm holding it in place. I'm going to tape down that part of my die to the paper to make sure it doesn't shift on me. And then we're going to run that through. Uh, Beth is asking why use that black ink instead of Oreo. So when I am, there are a couple reasons. So when I'm stamping sentiments, especially like you saw me do with an acrylic block, I don't have the ability to stamp it more than once when I'm using an acrylic block and I want a really crisp, uh, consistent, intense black on the first try. And that's what this ink gives me over the Oreo. I choose to use the Oreo if I'm doing any kind of coloring. It's waterproof, it's um, alcohol marker compatible, uh, it works with Gamsol. So I know that if I'm gonna be coloring an image, I'm always grabbing for my Oreo. But when I want that really intense, consistent black, especially without having to give a lot of effort, like closing my lid two to three times, that's when I choose to grab the VersaFine Claire. And I love it for that. Hopefully that makes sense. <laughs> Candy, I have a mini die cutter. I just, I don't know, I just brought my big one today. All right, so that is what it looks like when you cut down the, you have the same pierce line on the other side, the same little scallop, and you can determine the length of your sentiment strip based on whatever your sentiment is inside of it. So then if I take this and I want to just place him down here, let's put a card together, how about? So a lot of times once I finish my backgrounds, I'll just take a bunch of pieces that I've cut and I'll start to arrange them around and decide do I like that do I like that I think I like that with my sentiment about right here and then I can start adhering if I was really concerned with exactly where this was going I could grab a piece of the press and seal and get the whole scene picked up together as one and then nothing would be out of place. I'm not that concerned with finding the exact placement. That works really well when you're doing something like a floral arrangement and you've fussed and moved the flowers around a hundred times and you finally got it just where you want it. Use a piece of press and seal to pick that up. Um, let's see. Can you color with that ink? I have not, but I do think you can. Um, it does say perfect for using watercolors to color stamped images. However, it doesn't say anything about alcohol markers and I'm not sure that that works. Maybe somebody else who uses that ink more could speak to that. The other thing that I do a lot with this ink, and the, the first reason why we brought it in is because it is a pigment ink, so it stays wet longer, which means if you want to emboss and you don't want to use black embossing powder, you can stamp this in the black ink, cover it with your clear embossing powder, and then you have a sentiment that looks like you used black embossing powder without having to deal with the potential of those flyaway bits of embossing powder that are a lot more noticeable when it's black ink or black embossing powder. Okay, good. That's what I was thinking, Brenda. She says no on the Copics. It is a pigment ink and does not work for 
um, alcohol marker coloring. All right, so let's get one B adhered here. And then someone else asked, what do you wash off your, wash that ink off of your clear stamps with? Um, I think that was Lisa. And you can use your normal ink cleaner. Of course, mine is TE Stamper Spritz. That'll take anything off of anything. Love it. Okay. There we go. One last little B. You could put these on a toffee on toffee for the card base, or you could do maybe honey, black. If you're gonna do black, then definitely put something on the inside so you can write on it. All right, there we have a Just Because card. We have one that says, I don't have this one with the bees glued down, but there's our sweet as can be. Then we've got a couple other patterns here. I'm not sure what I'll end up doing with them, but I have plenty of bees left from the background that I stamped as well. So, little guy. <laughs> I might need a few more to fill in that last card, but. Hopefully this gives you some ideas on how to use that quad stencil for bee themed cards. I think it would be really fun on white card stock too. Of course, you'd have to pick something else for that white layer of ink because you can't do sugar cube ink on sugar cube card stock. Maybe sea salt or um, maybe the new oyster. So you have a couple of grays and a couple of yellows. So I'm excited to see what you guys come up with, and I hope you love this kit as much as we do. I was pretty excited when Heather was designing it. I was like, this one's so fun. Okay. All right, I'm going to say farewell. Thank you guys for stopping in today, for watching. Uh, we'll be back on Thursday. Susan is live this week. I don't know what she has planned, but I'm sure it's amazing. So you'll want to pop in at uh, 10 o'clock central time on Thursday. So hope you guys have a good week until then. We'll see you later. Bye-bye.